parents don't care my girlfriend died. My age 15 male girlfriend 15 female unexpectedly died last week. I was with her for over a year. She was my first kiss and I loved her a lot. My parents don't seem to care. They say it's time to get over it and stop crying. They say it was a dumb meaningless relationship at my age and that we would have broken up anyway. They say I didn't really love her because I am only 15. They won't get me therapy or support me. How can I feel better about girlfriend dying? How can I get parents to support me? Are they right about it being meaningless? Is there maybe a school counselor you can talk to? I'm so sorry, sad face, op I'm so sorry for your loss. Please reach out to your school for help. Dealing with the death of someone you know is very difficult. Even if it is a classmate or friend, it is still traumatic. And this was someone you were close to, that makes it more difficult. Did you go to the same school? Is the school offering counseling? Are they organizing a memorial? Dealing with the death of someone you know is very difficult. Even if it is a classmate or friend, it is still traumatic. Honestly this is true. Even classmates passing is awful. I had a classmate that committed suicide in 10th grade. I didn't even know them but it was bad. Had to go to a counseling thing simply because I suffered from the same feelings they had before passing and everything. It's not easy to deal with the death of just anyone. Op that was your GF regardless of your age it doesn't matter cause she meant something to you. I'm 19, I'm very immature, but if my main partner died, I'd be devastated. It wouldn't take a week to just get over it and your parents need to understand that, some people take years to move past the death of loved ones while others take days. They are being ridiculous and rude by being like this, they need help or something, and I know that's wrong to say, but seriously, no one in the right mindset would say that to someone grieving. And I agree with everyone else, op you should talk to your school counselor about how you feel and such too. It's not good to suppress your feelings for something this big either. And I'd just like to say, I'm so so deeply sorry for your lose up, I know it hurts, but hopefully with time it will get better. Just don't let this stop you from loving again, she wouldn't want that from you okay? She'd like you to be happy and she'll be there to help and support you even if you can't see her. I wish the best for you okay? Even if your school is virtual right now, I'm a teacher and our counselors and social workers are still working super hard to help kids right now. Unfortunately depending on where op lives, school counselors aren't going to do much besides just listen. They are mainly there to stop drama not to help long term issues, but op should check and see if the school provides a therapist outside of the school. This is what my school had and I was grateful for it when one of my close friends, 15 male, passed away. Sorry for your loss. Just listening and giving him validation is something he needs desperately. A school counselor can give him that plus contact resources provided by the school district. Ops guidance counselors might have connections to trained counselors, my high school did when my best friend lost her brother. School counselors are trained counselors. However, with a caseload of typically about 400 students it is impossible to provide therapy to each and every kid. They can help access resources to therapists that deal specifically with grief but would need parent permission due to op's age. Agreed, his parents sound like absolute trash. Even if they wouldn't do much more than listen it would be better than just keeping it to himself. Also, counselors often reach out to parents if they think a student needs more support than what they can provide. If his parents don't take him seriously then hearing from the counselor might give them a wake-up call. 
Speaking from personal experience. My dad didn't take me to therapy until my counselor suggested it. Yes. This is also a great point, and I hate that usually parents need to hear it from another adult before they seriously understand what their kids need. Yeah, it's messed up. I wouldn't say I knew exactly what was best for myself but I had been asking for help since I was very young and it's hard to be taken seriously when you don't have an adult backing you up. I think my dad was doing the best that he could but I resent the fact that I had to get an adult to vouch for me. The same thing happened when I asked to do online school. Discouraging others from seeking help from a reasonable source is dangerous. Many states require master-level education for school counselors with similar training, not the same, as mental health counselors. Grief and educating parents on mental health is definitely in the scope of a school counselor per the American School Counselors Association. Validation, and empathetic listening from a non-judgmental person can be extremely helpful to those grieving. Even if OP just gets a referral, it lets them know someone is there and willing to be part of their support structure. Which it sounds like OP may need right now. At the end of my reply I encouraged OP to check in with the school to see who could help. Listening definitely helps but if he wants something other just someone listening, they need help from someone other than a school counselor. OP, if you happen to read this, please know that school counselors can and will do more than just listen. For the most part, they have extensive training in mental health. Social slash emotional well-being is one of the pillars of school counseling. They cannot provide extensive therapy but they do have tools that are helpful for students like you. Your feelings are valid. Your pain is real. Stay strong and seek out the help you need. It's going to be tough but you can do this. Not true. My daughter is in a grief counseling group ran by a counselor and teacher who both have had someone very close to them pass away. This is through the school. My daughter lost her aunt two years ago and is just now finally coping with that loss. The schools can help a lot. My school and surrounding schools don't have counselors for this sort of thing, most of them dealt with scheduling classes and drama. I'm glad this was the case for your school but unfortunately it's not always how it works, sad face. I live in Washington and our counselors do a lot working with kids going through drama. A licensed mental health counselor is a therapist. Depending on where you are the terminology is different. If it's just a guidance counselor and not a licensed mental health professional they often have degrees in PYSCH and at the bare minimum have the compassion and resources to direct the student to a more appropriate provider. In most states, school counselors have some therapeutic counseling training as well as post-secondary planning. They also have specific grief and loss training as the death of a classmate or school staff member can be traumatic for the whole school community. Up, please reach out to your school counselor. Where I live they also provide students with avenues to access proper help. Such as giving them contact information for clinics, psychologists, doctors, literature, etc. They may not be qualified themselves but they are there to assist the student in finding the help they need. I was going to suggest that. He needs to reach out to his school counselor. Would he really want a virtual therapist while in the house with his parents? Therapy sessions are meant to be private. I could only image what they would say to him if they overheard their conversation. Some things are better done in person and therapy is one of them. How can parents be so insensitive, dismissive of your feelings? It might bring some comfort, help you feel more connected, reading that there are others in your shoes, and that experts validate your grief. The article also gives practical advice on how to cope, and where to look for help and support. 
how can parents be so insensitive? They're being comparative. They probably had shitty slash stupid relationships as they were growing up too and decided that it's exactly the same for everyone else. Add emotionally immature too, what horrible things to say to your child. What a horrible life lesson. Poor up. He may want to join our slash justna family and our slash raised by narcissists to figure out what kind of family he has. The last sub has an amazing collection of links and resources as well. Most school counselors are trained in crisis and trauma support for when a student dies or another traumatic event happens. If they can't help you directly, they can definitely provide resources to help support. Up I second this, please reach out to your school counselor, not only to help you with process your feelings surrounding your girlfriend's death, but also because your parents are withholding medical care, mental health care is medical care. This is a form of abuse. Your feelings are normal and valid, you have lost someone close to you. Your parents are not only wrong, they are being mean. Know that your grief will get easier to manage with the passage of time. Right now focus on not trying to suppress your feelings. I am so sorry your home is not a safe space for you to go through this, but do your best, try to find somewhere private when you feel overwhelmed. Grief is a process that you have to go through. Getting sleep is very important even though it is probably hard. Use a sleep cast if you're having problems falling asleep. Conversely, if you are sleeping too much try not to. Get outside as much as you can, take walks, sit in a park, whatever you can do. Try to eat as healthy as you can. Think of your body as the tool that is doing the work of processing your grief, it needs to be healthy to do this work. I am so sorry that you lost your girlfriend and I am so sorry you don't have kind and caring parents. Take care of yourself. America has more school cops than school counselors. Or go to the emergency room assuming you have insurance and tell them that you need to talk to someone regarding your sadness and it'll happily set you up with someone to talk with and then in turn will set you up with a follow-up appointment with a psychologist then your parents will have nothing to do with it and they aren't allowed to get any information from your psychologist because of the HIPAA laws. I'm sorry for your loss for I too lost my love two years ago that my parents care less either even though I was married for 26 years. This, as a teacher and someone who lost a friend at 15 to a heart attack, your teachers got you. You are likely still in NTI, if you are not, I am sorry. If you still are, at the end of your Zoom call tell a teacher you are most comfortable with, tell them you need a counselor that you need to speak to a professional. They should help you. A school counselor saved my mental health and helped my parents see that my depressive episode was real. Just having her listen to me was therapeutic, although eventually I did move to a paid therapist with my parents' support. Up, you should definitely talk to a counselor. Also, have you tried reaching out to her parents slash family? They are probably grieving, too. Spending some time talking to them might help the healing process for everyone. This is also a good chance to build a stronger relationship with some other adults in your life. I can't even imagine how you are feeling right now. I am sorry you lost your love. Be very careful with school-affiliated people. Don't tell them anything you don't want passed on to teachers or parents. If you're in the US, HIPAA is not for minors. If anyone will be more useless than OPS parents, it'll be a school counselor. I'm not sure if you're joking, but if you're serious, you could not be more wrong. School counselors are educated and trained basically the same as counseling you would get in a paid setting. Tons of school counselors choose to get their LPC license, and if not, they at least have their LLPC. 
Op's parents are being dismissive bordering on abusive. Any school counselor would take this seriously and would help with what they can, then point the kid toward other helpful resources for what is outside the counselor's purview. Could be true. They suck emo. Still better than the parents apparently. Friendships and loves in childhood are not meaningless. I lost one of my childhood friends when I was about 10 or 11. The bullies at school made fun of his death. I am in my 30s and I still miss him, and I hate that assholes made fun of him. I miss all the people I have lost and even years later I get hit by the occasional wave of sadness and heartache. That sorrow has become a comfort, like a familiar friend that visits me and brings along the memories of those people. They are never completely gone. I hope that when the initial pain and shock wears off that you can hold the good you had together close to your heart. As for your family, what they have said is appalling. You might be stuck with them now, but try to surround yourself with people who love and support you and who have compassion and empathy. People who raise you up instead of trying to drag you down to their level. If you can find a counselor to speak to, grief can easily turn to self-destruction and you are at a vulnerable age. Edit, thanks for the- I second this. I'm so sorry Op, we're with you and we know how it feels. Don't give up and let the memory of her make you feel loved and special. If you ever need to talk, my DMs are open. Yup, agree with this. Op do you have access to your school counselor? Probably they can help and guide you. That article is great, it really does an excellent job of showing just how deep and strong those bond can be. I also like them pointing out that grief carries on far longer than we generally like to accept. We carry grief until we die, it's what make the person live forever. I'm so glad this is being studied now. 20 plus years ago, I lost three close friends in a single car accident and I had talked about being with them that day and had real bad survivor's guilt. It wasn't treated the same as when a family member passed away. 10 years ago my best friend died of suicide. I've strongly shown signs of CPTSD from the repeated traumas but since it was back-to-back -back friends dying it wasn't classified as trauma. Even though I show signs of repeated traumas. It's a mess. I've since learned to cope and have a better understanding of my triggers but I have always thought this should be an important topic of study. We can experience trauma in many ways not just by the current book. Thanks for sharing. You are my hero. This came today, when I just lost someone close. Thank you. That sorrow has become a comfort, like a familiar friend that visits me and brings along the memories of those people. Wasn't planning on crying today. I have honestly never thought of it this way and it seriously changed me hearing it put that way. A friend dying, never mind a girlfriend is always meaningful. Having it at right at the age you feel immortal, at the age where feels dominate your behavior, that's a life-defining moment candidate right there. My best friend committed suicide at 15 and there were bullies at school that made fun of his death. I understand how you feel. It's been 15 years and I think about him every single day. I loved him so much. Childhood friendships have a special place in your heart forever. That is so heartbreaking. My friend died by swimming in some unhealthy water while visiting family in Thailand. The teachers tried to explain it as he ingested a bug as in bacteria, but the bullies in my school thought he literally are an insect and died so we're making fun of that. They weren't the best students and I didn't have it in me to argue with them. I'm glad to hear you think of your friends so often. Yes I feel this way. My childhood best friend died only aged 6 of a brain tumor. Very odd as I write this I think surely we couldn't have been so young, how could I remember?
I vividly remember one day she was there and the next time I saw her I barely recognized her. She had transformed and looked like a stranger, meds I'm guessing. I think of her every now and then, I don't doubt we might have drifted apart etc but more of the person she could have been. I would say kids are so f ed up but you get immature adults like this too, people are so f ed up. f ed up kids become f ed up adults and then raise more f ed up kids. The worst part is if you're the kind of person who ends up being born with any kind of empathy you're going to have a slew of problems. Sometimes they mature and realize what they did. People grow. I know you're right. But the amount of people who don't grow is still very overwhelming. Although it could just be a case-by-case -case basis depending on the kind of environment you live in. Regrettably I live in an environment where there's a lot of crime and poverty, where it seems like it's less likely for people to actually grow up. That is true. The earlier your situation is f ed up, the harder it is to change. Unfortunately I've noticed people who grow up in an environment like that, with a lot of crime and poverty, develop a lack of empathy almost as a survival technique. Many end up with a kill or be killed type attitude, a take advantage or be taken advantage of thought process. If you care it can be seen as a weakness and weaknesses can be exploited. Doesn't mean they don't care, it's just easier to pretend they don't or to even convince themselves they don't. It's like an abused child who learns not to cry. I just finished The Handmaid's Tale and this was something I noticed a lot of in the book. Numbing yourself because the horror is always there and if you let yourself feel it it will overwhelm you and it may be too hard to go on. This is especially true if things are particularly bad. You just get used to it, don't let yourself think too much about it, it's just the way it is and you can't change it so what's the point in always feeling bad about it? Feeling bad isn't going to change anything, make anything better. Better to just not feel and move on. I think you are onto something there. When I was younger and experiencing abuse that I couldn't escape I was far more angry and capable of so much more hate and at times able to be cold and distant. I hated my bullies then and wished so much I'll, but now as I am in a loving safe home and not experiencing such things, I find myself honestly wishing them well. I hope they found ways to be kinder and reflect on past behavior. Of course this is just anecdotal evidence and who knows how much of that is also just part of growing up. I know we're getting off topic here, but what do you think is the root cause of the crime and poverty in your area? Do you think that if we had a solution to that, we could also solve the problem of these people not being likely to grow up so to speak? If that was the case, we wouldn't have crime at all. Well that's an interesting point you make there. Maybe something we should pursue. Traumatized people traumatize people. Sad face, is this why I do not have a lot of problems? This is so true. The number of walls I had to knock down to get to the gooey center of my highly sensitive and empathetic husband when we first met due to the abusive and unloving parenting he had. I'm just so grateful he had only developed a thick shell because some people who grow up like that full on hard boil in order to protect themselves and then there is no going back.